My eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from you, maker of heaven, creator of the earth. So I will wait for you to come and 
for whatever reason, glad you're with us. Hope you, uh, hope you enjoy. We open our services by praying for another community of faith. So today we're praying for a church over in Auburn, I believe. Faith Baptist Church. Anyways, Faith Baptist Church over on. Let's pray. Lord, we, th- we as always, we thank you for um, your work throughout uh, uh, the, just the central Maine area, Lord, all these communities of faith that uh, profess to uh, name the name of Jesus. We cheer for them. We're not in competition with them, so we bless them. Lord, for Faith Baptist, as they meet this morning, would you pour your spirit out upon them? Would you keep them attentive to the truth of your word? And would you increase their uh, sphere of influence as they... Uh, just our ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We thank you for them. Lord, for us, we just say, come Holy Spirit, meet us in this place. We welcome your presence here. Uh, We thank you for your presence and you are worthy of all worship, honor, and praise this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, just a housekeeping. uh, Only specific to our light, so don't worry about that. And you're not having a moment if you notice the lights moving. So, um, but why don't you look to your neighbor right now, say hello, good morning, and let's worship. To so your hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are one desire. You alone are holy. Your fire fall down. Let's sing that again. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Let your fire fall. I fall down in this place. So let our praise be a welcome. Let our songs be a sign that we are here for. We are here for. your breath come from heaven fill our hearts with your life as we are here for you as we are here for you to your hearts to you our hearts are all
in this place as we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love be welcome in this place let every heart every heart adore let every soul awake almighty god of love be welcome in this place we welcome you with praise we welcome you Almighty God of love, be welcome in this place. Be welcome in this place. Receive our songs of praise. Welcome in your house. Be welcome in this place. Let dead things come to life as we sing these songs of praise.
lift our voices in praise. You are worthy of it all. All I have to bring. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Let's sing that again. Let's sing you're worthy. You're worthy of it all. Yes, you're worthy of it all. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory.
for us This is love This is love He walked the hill He bore the cross This is love This is love our thanks. God, we love you so much. It's for that reason that we bow down to you. So God, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you're here with us. And thank you for this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, why don't you go ahead and have a seat. Good to see you this morning. My name is Seth. Uh, the worship team this morning, you, you know, the worship team is in here like a concert where they perform for us. They lead us into worship, which they did an amazing job this morning. But the, with you guys this morning, there was like this distinction between them and you. It was like this choir. 
It was beautiful. You guys sang so well this morning. I wanted you guys to know that. I thought maybe with the lights being so bright, people would be a little bit more quiet, but instead it was like this projection. It was awesome. So I just love being able to be a part of that with you guys. It was awesome. So yeah, you can clap. Uh, this morning, if you came and you, you have a tithe or an offering that you want to give, please do so on your way out in one of the boxes in the back. Uh, and as always, you can always give online as well. Use that Church Center app. You're going to see it highlighted in today's announcements. Don't be afraid to go into your app store, find that app, download it, figure out how to get connected to Pathway Vineyard Church. It's pretty easy. You can always ask Jeremy, myself, or somebody else how to do that. But as for the tithe, let's pray a blessing over that. So God, thank you so much again for today, for each person here, and that we can give back to you. And God, we just pray that you would bless all that is given today in Jesus' name. Amen. And so with that, let's see what else Jeremy has to talk about today with the announcements. My name is Jeremy. I'm on staff here at Pathway. And if you're new here, we would love to connect with you. If you're tech savvy, you can scan this QR code with a smartphone camera and fill out that connect card right from your phone. If you prefer paper and pen, we have connect cards right at the info booth. Regardless of which way you'd like to connect with us, come to the info booth after the service. We would love to meet you and to give you a gift just to say thank you for checking us out today. Nativity is happening December 9th and the 10th and we need your kiddos. A special part of Nativity each year is having kids dress up as shepherds and angels to be a part of the show. To participate, all you have to do is visit the Church Center app or our website and sign them up ASAP. Our community center is in full swing. That's a baseball analogy right there, people. As we approach the holiday season, we are on a mission to love and serve our community. And here are a few ways that you can help. Number one, feed a family. Every year, Pathway Family gives back to our community by providing free meals and bags for Thanksgiving. This year, we want to use these bags to build relationships with those who will be receiving them. If you know a family or families in need, log on to the Church Center app and hit the Thanksgiving button. Select Feed a Family, Lewiston, and register the number of bags you want. We'll pack them, let you know when they're ready, and you deliver them. Number two. Woohoo! That's my Winnie the Pooh number two. Purchase items. If you want to purchase food items to donate, simply grab a bag in the foyer, fill it out with the items listed, and return it by November 13th. You also can find that list by clicking the Thanksgiving button in the Church Center app. Number three, my French Canadian accent came out. Pack some bags. If you'd like to help put bags together, we would love your help. Simply hit the Thanksgiving button on the Church Center app and select Thanksgiving Meal Bag Volunteers. We are so thankful for all who donate to the Pathway Mission Initiative, or PMI. Your donations make it possible to feed and serve our entire community all year. And for our final segment, did you know that 144 years ago this month... Uh, Seth, gosh, I'm just trying to finish the final segment. I know, but I've got something and I think you're going to love it. You know, maybe we could work something else in next week. You know, that... Uh, come on, man. I really want to share it. Oh, fine. Did you know that today is one of the very few days of the year that you can sit down and watch a hockey game, a basketball game, a football game, and a baseball game. I mean, how exciting is that? I don't watch sports. <laughs> well, if you would stand, turn to the person near you and tell them which sport you'll be watching or not. And as always, we hope you feel welcomed and loved 
here at Pathos. Such pain, so I could live free from my shame. You gave your life there on the cross before. right now so that that's just that's just sweet any Yankees fans here just 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 proof that we welcome all people right hey I like Seth I just like Seth was particularly moved uh, during worship today um, not so much by your guys' great voices that was great but Eunice you really blessed me singing I am so I am so humbled and blessed that God is bringing the nations together here at Pathway and that we're really representing the broader community. And I don't know what God's up to in this whole convergence of people around here at Central Maine, but I'm blessed by it, humbled by it. We're actually going to do a series at the beginning of the year about what can take place in any community when God just brings people from diverse backgrounds together. Um, and what he may accomplish in in a community such as here in Central Maine. So I'm glad you guys are all here, man. It's uh, all of you. It's just, it's what a great church we have. I love being part of this community of faith. We're in a series looking at spiritual gifts, and it correlates with most of our small group ministry that's happening right now. We put together a curriculum or a workbook that goes along with this teaching series. So many of you during the week, I know, uh, are going through the workbook together and, and complementing what's being said here on Sundays. If you still didn't get a workbook, you can grab one at the info booth. We'd love for you to have that uh, information. Uh, but we kind of grouped the gifts together just so we could get uh, through this series in an appropriate number of weeks. Uh, not that there's anything special about these groupings, but today the groupings that we put together we called uh, the outreach gifts, outreach gifts. And the two that we'll be looking at this week are apostle, the gift of apostleship, and evangelism. These spiritual gifts play a very, very important role in part in the way the message of Jesus Christ is communicated throughout the world. These gifts are very necessary for that to be effective. Uh, the message of our faith, the message of the Christian faith, it's called the good news. And the reason it's called the good news is because the foundational belief in Christianity is that there's a creator God, and that creator God loves us and expressed his love for us and did something for us that we had no capacity to do for ourselves, and that is save us. When When we, humanity, broke God's creation, God was not satisfied with losing that which he loved, so he provided a way for us to get back everything humans lost at the fall of man. And he did that through sending his son, to pay the penalty for our sin. In the broad scope, the penalty for sin is death. And God said, I am not satisfied with my children dying. So he provided a way and died in our place so that we can have access to that very God 
that we were just worshiping this morning. That's the foundational message of the Christian faith, and it is often expressed by those uh, that help us be evangelistic in our faith or that lead us through the gift of apostleship. Our big idea for this week is this. We are all called to share our faith. I think you'd have a hard time reading scripture and not uh, resolving that uh, on some level, each of us are called to share our faith. But some people are gifted to present the message of Christ in a clear and compelling way to those not yet journeying with Jesus. If you've been around Christian circles, you've probably run into those individuals that their primary gifting, their purpose, their passion is to share their faith, to share faith with others. And both these gifts uh, fall under that expression. Like other gifts, however, even if this gift, apostleship or evangelism, is not your primary gift, Remember, we use this analogy of a tool belt because we said that although we have a primary gift, we think through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can have access to all the gifts. And in a situation and a circumstance might arise where God invites us to draw one of the gifts we're not regularly operating in out of that spiritual tool belt and use it for a particular situation or circumstance. Then thus sharing your faith with, with another it might be something that you don't always use, but God might invite you to use in a particular situation. In large part, God communicates his, his message through the work um, he has and is doing by his people. We become God's ambassadors, per se. When we say yes to Jesus, when we begin a journey with him, we become his ambassadors or his representatives here on earth. So literally, we, we strive to live a life that, that demonstrates the one that we say we believe in, in this case, Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 really uh, exhorts us towards this thought of being... Uh, representative of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Uh, I'll put it on the screen. You can follow along. It says, therefore, uh, in light of what he said, again, Paul's exhorting the church here, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here, right? We talk about that. When we say yes to Jesus, he does away with our old sinful self, deposits his spirit within us, and we become this new version, we become the person he intends us to be, or at least we're working towards that. Verse 18, he says, all this is from God. It's God who did the work, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. You can use a synonym for reconciliation. You could use the word reunited. In a sense, we were reunited with God through the work of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, resurrection, ascension to the Father. So we will stand before a holy God, welcomed into eternity, not based on anything we did, but on the merits of Jesus, on the work of Jesus. But Jesus says, now, I, I'm giving you, my followers, this gift of helping others reconcile or reunite with God. Look at verse 19. He says that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. That was the mission of Jesus. Not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us, who's us? The church, the people of God. He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. God is accomplishing his purposes through us. What's his purpose? To reunite people with God. So we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. These outreach gifts primarily exist to help those individuals who perhaps either feel far away from God or are maybe ignorant of his message. They help them to hear and see the good news. So our lives should literally, as Jesus follows, should be lived in such a way that through Whatever people hear and see, they see God. They see the work of Jesus. We're ambassadors. We represent King Jesus in our life, and word and deed, that's what we should be working towards. And the desire is that hopefully those that see our life, hear our story, are compelled to say yes themselves to Jesus' invitation 
and get God's free gift, be free of guilt, and, and have eternal life. The anchor verse for the, for the workbook this week is Matthew 28, 18, 20. You often hear this as the Great Commission, but it's basically Jesus explaining to his followers what their overarching purpose is. Now, we all may have individual purpose in our journey with Jesus, and that purpose is expressed in the people we know, the influence we have, maybe the things we do in our day-to-day life. But the church, the people of God, on top of our individual purposes, have an overarching purpose. And Jesus makes that clear in Matthew 28. He says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And that's the, that's the great commission. That's the charge to the people of God. Go spread this message of Jesus wherever you can spread it. And, and so that's ultimately our overarching mission. This church here, this community of faith, Pathway Vineyard Church, is the result of people operating in the gift of apostleship and evangelism. What I mean by that is way back in 1987-ish, 86, 87-ish, there were people who felt compelled by God to start a community of faith here in Lewiston. And what that took was people that had some vision, that had some leadership capacity, and had a heart for people that were not walking with Jesus. And so those individuals exercised these gifts. Lo and behold, this congregation was birthed and formed. And now this congregation has gone on um, because of the gifts God has deposited in us, and we've started other communities of faith. We've started other vineyard churches, Mechanic Falls and Greater Portland and Saco, and we've started sites, multi-sites, extensions of Pathway in other parts of Central Maine, Gray and Brunswick. Gray and Brunswick exist because people exercise the gifts that God has placed within them, a burden for communities to know the good news, the saving news of Jesus Christ. The outreach gifts were mobilized, these churches, these congregations were planted, and people have become followers of Jesus. That ultimately is our overarching mission. Oftentimes at the point or out in front of a community of faith mission, are people that are gifted with gifts such as apostleship or evangelism. And Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, again, Ephesians 4 reminds us where gifts originate from and really what their primary purpose is. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 says, So Christ himself gave, the gifts came from Christ, they came from Jesus. Christ himself gave the uh, apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, Why did God gift people with these things? To equip his people, the church, for works of service, the work of the kingdom, so that the body of Christ may be built up, so that we may influence the world around us. So as those that have these gifts use them, they deposit them in the community of God's people, and then that kind of wells up within the community of God's people and communities of faith can have tremendous influence on the broader community. So let me now just talk a little bit specifically about each one of these gifts. First, the gift of apostleship. Now, the gift, when you read in the Bible about being an apostle, um, there's kind of two categories that apostleship falls under. First is capital A, apostle. When we talk about the gift of the Spirit for the church today, we're not talking about capital A, apostle. We're talking about small a apostle. And there is a, a, a distinction, uh, and it's very important to, to realize this, particularly if you feel this is the gift that God has deposited within you. But the spiritual gift of apostleship, in terms of capital A apostle, this is the, when you think about those in the Bible that were chosen by Jesus when Jesus walked the earth. They were recognized by him. They were given authority by him. They were given instruction by him. There are qualifiers for the capital A apostle. And those qualifiers are this. A, a capital A apostle was chosen by Jesus while he was on earth, and the requirements of apostleship with a capital A were they had to be a faithful eyewitness of Jesus, 
They had to be a witness of Jesus' ministry and his resurrection. They had to be personally called by him. And they were given authority to establish the original church. They, some of them were used for the writing of scripture. And so I, I, I promise you, none of us have the mantle of capital A apostle today. None of us. I, I didn't see Jesus, right? I, I see him in spirit and in truth. And I certainly was not given authority to write scripture. Like, there'll be no uh, new book of the Bible called Alan 316 coming out, right? Like, it's just not, it's not going to happen. It's just that's not the, the gift of apostleship that God has given the church of Jesus Christ. Um, th- there are no more apostle, capital A, apostles today. Uh, Jesus gave some, however, to be apostles but those, that apostleship gift is different from what it was when Jesus walked the earth. The mission for those that have the gift of apostleship today, they're the ones, when you think about it, they're the ones that are called to plant new ministries, start new churches, uh, go in places where the gospel has not been preached and establish um, outposts for the gospel to be preached. Many times apostleship goes hand in hand with those that have gifted uh, to reach the world in, in a missionary uh, setting. These are the people that are devoted to raising up and developing leaders. Uh, they're the ones that call out leadership in others, right? So I had, I had uh, folks in my life that I could say exercise the gift of apostleship in my life. They, they uh, invited me into ministry opportunities. They were the ones that would say, you know, we, we recognize that God is doing this in your life. And they're the ones that called called me into opportunities to lead and serve as God kind of highlighted those things um, in my life to them. And so all of us can be the beneficiaries of those that have this apostolic gift or call on their life. We, we benefit from them. I mean, if you feel as though you ha- are, are born with any desire to lead, uh, to serve others, you'll probably need people that have an apostolic gift in your life to, to, to call that forth, to, to guide you. Because if you're ever going to launch into any type of Christian service or Christian leadership, you need training. Like where the church goes off the rails is when we just lay hands on people and anoint them and ordain them and empower them without providing them any level of training. And that never ends well. And so it's very important that, that if we recognize that perhaps God has called us into areas in which we'll have influence or leadership, that we have people in our lives that have exercised the gifts such as apostleship. When, because of the apostleship that we are talking about, small a apostleship, I think sometimes the church gets off the tracks and tries to act as if there's still capital A apostles in the kingdom of God today, here on earth. And I would just say be weary of that. Capital A apostles usually finish their talk by saying something like, and for $29.99, you too can have what I have. And, and just, just avoid that foolishness. I mean, don't get, don't get caught up in that, in that stuff. But you know you're under healthy apostleship when the person that has influence in, in your journey, when they operate in such a way that they're always pointing people to Jesus, not themselves. Great apostleship is when you point people to Jesus and you deflect, really, the attention that people may try to uh, reflect back upon you. Uh, Those that operate with the true gift of apostleship on this side of the cross are always looking to give away what God has given them rather than profit off the backs of others. Meaning that they're always recognizing that if God has deposited something in them, they're to use it in such a way that honors God And it's to be given away for the well-being of other people, not to be self-consumed to build their own brand or their own image. That's when you know you're under healthy apostleship. How might this gift be used in your life, whether primarily or secondarily? Because you may be sitting and listening and go, I I have no influence. I'm 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 never going to operate in the gift of apostleship. I'll never pull that tool out of my tool belt. Are you a parent? You might be an apostle to your child. 
Because a parent's role is to guide that one, to have influence, to call the best out of them. And as you begin to recognize gifts and talents and abilities in their life, you, you're calling those forth and you're, you're breathing on those and you're giving opportunity. So don't be so sure. Are you a grandparent? Are you a great-grandparent? Are you an aunt or uncle or school teacher? Or find yourself in a sphere of having influence or authority over another? You better well believe you can operate in the gift of apostleship. But there may be some of you here that, like, God's saying, nope, this is your primary gift. I'm going to invite you to step out and operate in it. Maybe there's some of you here today that, you know, maybe, maybe you have a missionary call on your life. God said, hey, I want you to go to a land that is not your own. And if you maybe have ever felt stirred in that direction, you then need some people in your life that can help train, equip, and get you to where it is that God wants to lead you. Uh, maybe you're a small group leader here at Pathway. One of, the, one of the things that we try to encourage our small groups leaders in is to always be looking around to see if they can replicate or reproduce themselves. So you might be leading a small group, and in the, in the process of leading your group, you look around the room and you go, that person's a leader. I can just recognize and tell, and then you may call that out in them. What are you doing? You're exercising the gift of apostleship in that moment. Maybe some of you are called to plant a church, be part of a church planting team. You never know how God might use you if you just simply develop the habit of saying yes to God's invitation. All right, moving on to evangelism. Evangelism, operating in this gift Operating in the gift of evangelism doesn't necessarily mean you're supposed to travel the world or have a big public uh, ministry. Um, actually, the Greek word for evangelism that's used in the Bible is the word that means to proclaim glad tidings, to bring good news. It's, it's a messenger of good, and it donates, uh, it donates, uh, uh, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> denotes, denotes, thank you, yeah, denotes. I sometimes wonder why I'm up here. So, It denotes a, 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 a person that can uh, present the gospel in a compelling way. As a primary gift, for those that are gifted primarily with evangelism, they're given the unique ability by the Holy Spirit to clearly and effectively communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. Perhaps many of you are the beneficiaries of someone who had an evangelistic gift. And maybe you were in a church service or in an environment where somebody just shared their faith in such a way that it was just, it was compelling, it was clear, and it just moved you to say yes to Jesus. They were operating in the gift of evangelism. Evangelists are burdened, um, their hearts are burdened for what, what, the, what we refer to according to scripture as lost people. Something we don't talk a whole heck of a lot about from this platform, but it's very real, is um, for those people that do not embrace the claims of Jesus Christ, it doesn't end well for them. Like we're all eternal beings. And that eternity will result in either being in the presence of God or separated from God. And that's sober. And it's something we don't like to think about a whole lot. But it is part of the foundational truth of our faith. And why? Why the evangelists will say, my heart hurts for lost people. And they feel compelled to just continually be uh, sharing their faith with others. They, they're just burdened by that. There was a, a great uh, faith healer in the early part of the 20th century named Smith Wigglesworth and just crazy, crazy ways that God used Smith Wigglesworth in this healing ministry. Like he would, you know, it'd be one of these situations that they'd put a tent up in a community and the, it just, like old, just like New Testament times and they'd bring the sick and there's, there's documented cases of miraculous healings, cancerous tumors like shriveling and all kinds of crazy stuff happening through God anointing on Smith Wigglesworth. But in one preaching session, Wigglesworth Wiggle, Wigglesworth said, he said he would rather one person give their life to Jesus than to observe 10,000 people be physically healed. That's the burden he had. He knew what was at stake. You know, it, it, wonderful to be healed. More important to have the heart healed by the saving news of Jesus Christ. Evangelists are able to overcome the normal fear or of rejection and engage non-believers in meaningful conversation about Jesus. 
Uh, Their gift allows them to communicate with all types of people and therefore they often receive a greater response to the message. But it's it's a gift that I believe all of us at any moment can operate in because I think sometimes the best evangelism is just sharing your story, telling people what Jesus did in your life and then you become a living testimony of who God is and what he's doing here on earth. I know for me, uh, anytime I've told you guys I'm on record, anytime that I do any level of gift assessment and discovering my spiritual gift, uh, evangelism is always my number one gift. And I've known that since I was a little boy. I, I didn't always embrace it, but I've known it since I was about 11 years old. When I was around 11 years old, I was part of a, a little church here in Lewiston called Good News Chapel, wonderful church. There's some of you here that went there. And I led a lot of people to Christ, this church did. It it wasn't quite big enough to have um, all the bells and whistles for every ministry that people often demand. So youth group, uh, there was some teenagers, but there wasn't a whole lot of teenagers. And I was 11, so I wasn't quite a teenager. But the youth group was small enough that I got to weasel my way into the youth group. And so on one given summer weekend, they were going to do this outdoor kind of retreat festival, and they asked if they could do it at our house. We grew up out here, uh, uh, not too far from here, out Pinewoods Road, nice country setting, had a bit of a meadow for a backyard. It was going to be a camping thing. And so they wanted to do it at our house. And I thought, this is great. I mean, this is wonderful. I, that 11-year-old boy, I had my eye on a couple of the teenage girls, and I thought, they are going to be captive in my backyard. And I don't mean that in any creepy sense of the way. But, but I thought this would be wonderful until the youth leader came to my sister and I and said, hey, because you guys are hosting this, we want you to do the morning devotions. And I thought, oh, morning devotions. And I just, for whatever reason, I knew this. I knew I had to share something out of the Bible. And for whatever reason, I thought I was grossly unqualified because in my mind, you had to have some type of doctorate to share something out of the Bible. But I said, you know, obviously I, I, I was uh, compliant. I was not that rebellious towards authority at that point in my life. So I said, okay, I'll share. I'll go, I'll go Saturday morning. Um, so it begins to roll around, and if, if you, you know me well, you know that I can be a bit of a master procrastinator, the, you know, research paper the night before it's due guy. And uh, so I, although I knew this was coming, I didn't put a whole lot of prep into it. So sure enough, Friday gets here, and Friday night I'm thinking, what am I going to say and not look foolish to these people tomorrow? And I resolved that the only Bible verse I really was familiar with was John 3.16, one that is often the very first verse that so many, so many kids memorize, right? We see it in the back of the end zones at football games. So I'm like, I guess that's, that's all I got. That's what I'll go with. Sure enough, we gather in a circle, and I tell them, open your Bible to John chapter 3. And uh, so they open their Bible, and I start to read John 3.16. And I didn't get three words out, and I just started to bawl. And so now I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm having this moment with God, but I'm also I'm like, now I'm really looking stupid. I said, for God so loved the world, and I just began to weep. And although I was 11, I knew enough to know that the voice of God was speaking, was saying to me, Alan, this is my heart for lost people. And so I just mumbled out something about why it was so important that we tell people about Jesus. And it was in that moment I knew that God birthed that within me. Now, I didn't always walk in that gifting. I tried to actually walk away for it for a season of life. But it's certainly something that God has placed in me. And I don't know for me if there's any greater joy than than other than maybe watching my children be born, than sharing a moment when someone's eternity has changed. A number of years ago, there was a a guy that stumbled into my office, and um, let's just say his name is Tim Grizzly, because I meant to ask him if I could share this story, but being the master procrastinator, I forgot to ask him. Um, But uh, Tim stumbled in to my office. Uh, I don't even know how he found out about us, knew who we were. He came in, asked if he could meet with a pastor. They asked if I would meet with him. Sure, come on in. Sitting on a chair in my office, and I said, hey, what's going on, man? And he just began to uh, share a little bit about where he was at in life and 
Uh, was obviously burdened, quite emotional, had some things going on that he just didn't quite know how to navigate and see clearly. And, and I'm just listening and sitting there, uh, listening to what he's saying. And at one point, he just looks up at me and he said, dude, I don't even know why I'm here. I don't even know you. And, and in that moment, I just did what I, I felt the Holy Spirit led to do. And I looked at him and I said, Jim, I mean Tim, I know exactly why you're here. He goes, you do? I said, yeah. I said, God's been chasing you your whole life. And I said, he led you here today because he wants you to finally stop and say yes to what he's offering. I said, Jesus is after you, man. He just wants you to say yes. I said, do you want me to pray with you right now and say yes to Jesus? He's like, yeah, I think I do. So we did. We prayed. I mean, I can't tell you what the prayer was. We just pray. I led him through a little prayer and say yes to Jesus. Uh, forgive me for my sins. Uh, come into my life. The, you know, the prayer we often encourage people to pray. And it's been amazing to watch his life and to see God use him and see the way he invests in our young people here uh, at Pathway and bring his own son into the world and the influence he has with it. And it's just, I, again, I don't know that there's anything, for me, anything sweeter than that. And I, I think all of you, have some level of influence in people's lives. And sometimes it's just a matter of asking the Holy Spirit to give you the courage to just seize the moment. And to look somebody in the eye and say, I know why you're here. I know what God thinks about you. He loves you. And you'd be surprised how when you feel totally empty and disempowered, you would be surprised how powerful the Holy Spirit is in those moments. It can actually help you through. I'll end with a, with a couple uh, one famous and one not so famous examples of these gifts in action. In uh, 400 AD, there was a 16 year old boy named Patrick living in England, and there was an invasion by the Druid armies, and he was kidnapped and dragged back to Ireland, where he lived as a slave, began to learn the native language. He began to have these miraculous dreams and visions by God in his uh, enslavement. And it actually led to him finding a way to escape Ireland and get back to England. He miraculously returned a free young man to England. And he was urged to never leave England, England again, primarily by his parents. But then an interesting thing happened. While he was uh, sleeping one night, God awoke him with another dream. And in the dream, he uh, recognized it was a people group from away a uh, people group from Ireland, Ireland, and they were saying, Patrick, come live amongst us. And he was so moved by that dream that he went back to Ireland, knowing the risk, but he went back to Ireland, and he moved in great signs and wonders through the power of the Holy Spirit, leading then hundreds and then thousands, and now millions under his influence to Christ. He's known as the Green Martyr. And he's the individual we celebrate on St. Patrick's Day. And St. Patrick, you know, as much as we like to think of him as this wonderful Irish man, he was English. And used by God to go to the very people who enslaved him to be ambassadors or messengers of Jesus Christ. He was both apostolic and evangelistic. In one of his famous prayers, he said, I pray to God to give me perseverance and to grant that I be a faithful witness to him to the end of my life for my God. What a great prayer. God, I just want to be a witness to you. What a great prayer. And a not so famous uh, individual, probably uh, some of you would never know, and that was uh, a, a lady called Annabelle Thompson. And Annabelle was led to Christ in, 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 in her younger years. Somebody told her the good news of Jesus Christ, and she said yes. And then she simply began sharing her story, uh, at first sharing it with her children. And one of those children was Gloria. And Gloria said yes to the invitation of Jesus Christ. And then Gloria went out of the, her way to make sure that every opportunity she could, she got her children in front of Jesus through the ministry of a local church. And one of those children was Alan. And then Alan met a girl named Darlin. And he began to share his faith with her. And Darlin began her journey with Jesus. And Darlin was working locally here at a, a local office, Liberty Mutual, and had friends in the, in the office place. And 
Darlin, through just simple friendship conversation, began sharing her story with her coworkers and her friends. And one of those coworkers was a girl named Doreen. And Doreen received an invitation to come to, I don't know if it was Easter Sunday or, or something here at Pathway. And Doreen came and gave her life to Jesus. And, and, and I remember Doreen going through Alpha and, and you know, her uh, inviting her kids to, to be part of the community of faith and her now passing that on to her children. Doreen's worked for I don't know how many years in our, in our nursery, influencing babies. But I say all that to say, you know, there was, I was in an environment once, and Doreen was there, and somebody asked her to share how she came to faith. And she said, oh, I came to faith because of Alan's grandmother. And I said, what? No, you didn't. You don't even know her. She said, oh, yes. She goes, it's your grandmother. Like, your grandmother said yes to Jesus, led your mother to Christ, your mother led you to Christ, you led Darlin to Christ, and God had Darlin work with me. All of us. Every one of us, I think this is one of the gifts that God is regularly inviting all of us to draw from that tool belt. Uh, The people of central Maine need the good news that we've received. They desperately need it. Don't ever discount just even the power of your story. You know, I, I love the, the, the young boy who Jesus healed and pe- caused a rouse in the community and people thought he was faking it and they're, they're like drilling him like, what happened? Tell us what happened. He's like, and you know, ultimately, I'm paraphrasing this story by the way, but ultimately the young man says, I don't know, dude. I was blind, but now I see. That's all I know. That's my story. And you guys have a story. And you might not know exactly how you arrived where you're at, but if you're a follower of Jesus, there's a journey. And sometimes you just sharing that journey will help somebody else's eternity change. Don't feel like you're an evangelist. That's okay. You can still play an important part just by getting people in front of Jesus. That's why we're so big around here saying, hey, invite friends to church. Like, that's a no risk. You can bribe them with food. Like, hey, man, I, I want to take you to dinner. But uh, just swing by the church with me first, all right? And you never know what might happen. You know, I, I, years ago, and I'll end with this, but years ago, we took a survey. Um, we're always checking up on how we're doing as a community of faith. We want to know where it's our strengths, what's our weaknesses. There's a national organization called Natural Church Development, which they're in the business of helping churches really uh, do some self-reflection, find your strengths and weaknesses. We were in a season where we thought we maybe were on the lower end of evangelism. We thought, well, I don't know if we're doing that great with outreach right now, and and so we went through this process, and, and um, when we got the results back, evangelism was our highest one. And I remember we thought, That's, that seems odd, because we haven't been out and about in the community a lot. Part of this survey is they, they poll members of the congregation as well. And what we found out was many of you, if you were here then and took that survey, many of you rated us high in evangelism because this is what you said. I know this. If I invite my unchurched friend to the vineyard, I know they're going to hear the good news about Jesus Christ and be given a chance to meet him. And so that, that, that this propelled us into this, no, we are an evangelistic church. So I say that to say, you may not be standing on a platform sharing some deep theological point trying to compel people to uh, follow Jesus. You can share your story, and at the very least, you can say, hey, you want to go to church with me? What's the worst they can say? No, I don't. Okay, see you tomorrow, John. It's pretty low risk. Invite someone to church. Take a risk, share your story. Uh, Just let your words and your deeds align with the words and deeds of Jesus, and you'll be evangelistic. Let's stand. Well, it would be foolish for me to uh, speak on evangelism and not give people a chance to start a journey with Jesus. So why don't we close our eyes? You might be here this morning and like, uh, you know, Jim was in my office a couple decades ago. And it's Jim Bear, by the way. He told me I could use this story. But, uh, if you, you know, you, you, might, uh, you might be saying, what am I doing here? I don't know what I'm doing here. I know what you're doing here. God, who formed you in your mother's womb, loves you, 
and he's been chasing after you your entire life. And he's got you in this moment to hear that there's a better way. There's freedom from brokenness, addiction, sickness, destruction, bad choices. There's forgiveness for that. And there's a new beginning on your horizon. And all you have to do is grab a hold of it. It's there. All you can do is say yes to God. Like, I want what you're offering me. So if you want to begin a journey with Jesus today, if you're not sure where you stand in relationship with God, I'm going to invite you in the quietness of your own thoughts to say a simple prayer, something like this. God, here I am. You got me. I want to run. I don't want to hide. I don't want to live in shame. I don't want to live with regret. I don't want to live with anger. I don't want addiction to be what defines me. I don't want broken human relationships to be what I'm known for. So I say yes to a new beginning, to a forgiveness of sin, and I say yes to your gift of eternal life, to be a new creation, like the Bible said. So God, come into my life. I surrender it to you today. Just eyes closed. I just want you to be courageous enough that if you prayed that, I I just want you to be courageous enough right now to slip your hand up and say, Pastor, I prayed that prayer today. Awesome, man. Great, guys. Best decision of your life. Great, man. Fantastic. Awesome. So, Holy Spirit, I pray right now you would come. You know, let me just, as I pray this, let me just clue you in. There's going to be voices that come to your mind and say, Dude, what are you doing? It was just an emotional moment. I'm here to tell you that this moment was orchestrated by God and is the defining moment for the rest of your eternity. So don't let anything talk you out of that. You know, in a moment, I'm going to have some people up front to be available to pray for people. If you had the courage to come up and say, I prayed that, we'd love to connect with you. At the very least, if you prayed that prayer today and you know someone who's a Christian, just tell them you did that. Because part of our role as the people of God is to help one another now down this journey. So God, we just thank you for this. We pray blessing over those that prayed. We say now, open their heart to the love that you have for them. May they find their purpose uh, in their freedom and their hope in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Let's give these people a hand. That's awesome, man. So I'm going to have... The prayer folks would come down and be available. We pray for people at the end of our services. If you've got anything uh, that maybe you don't see clearly how to navigate, sometimes God works in our lives through the prayers of other people. That's why we always have folks willing to pray for you uh, if you'd like. So uh, come get some prayer if you'd like. like. Other than that, God bless you guys. Uh, We'll see you on the journey.
How you bore the cross, how you suffered. We will remember you. We will think on you in the garden, in the loneliness of your. To the least and last, you are calling. We will remember you. We will remember you. Oh, bring the bread, pour the wine. There is room at the table. All we need, you supply. There is room at the table. Bring the bread, pour the wine. There is room at the table. All we need, you supply. There is room at the table. Yeah.
真的。